housing subsidy or a voucher or another route. So we're really starting to rely on what we call problem solving. So when you come into a system, if I say, okay, you're homeless, here's a voucher, you're gonna take it. If there's some conversation that we have and I say, hey, what about your relationships? What about your family? Are there other resources that we're not thinking about right now because you're in crisis? And so you don't have time or the ability to think about those things. Can we resolve your homelessness without even bringing you into the system? Can we resolve your homelessness without sending you to the shelter? Are there other things that we can use and other resources? And this is what we mean when we talk about prevention, when we talk about diversion. Um, helping people to not even come into this, this area in the first place, but keeping them, how do we keep you in your apartment if you're gonna get evicted tomorrow? How do we advocate for you? Um, that has become much more effective, we've seen, than any of the other routes, and it's faster as well. Um, we can talk more about that as well. I don't wanna... Um, the other thing I wanted to flag for you, um, so LASA, uh, the other huge part of LASA is that we house all of the data. We host the homeless count every year, we do all the data analytics, and we, we are the holders of all of the data for our system. So what we have published now are, um, we call it city level data dashboards. So you can go to the LASA website, you can look for your city, so just Palisades, and you can see on a monthly basis the activity that's going on in your community. Because we hear it all the time that, you know, all this money is being poured in through Measure H and other things, but what's actually happening in my city? How is that actually impacting me? So in our city level dashboards, you can see how many people you have unsheltered. You can see the difference in your city over a period of time, um, over a year. Um, you'll also be able to see how many people are engaged, how many people are sheltered or unsheltered, and track that progress throughout the year. So if you haven't been to our website, I encourage you to go and take a look at the city level data, and you can also compare it to other cities. It's, it's kind of fun to go and, and play around on that, but also see what's really being done. And then last but not least, um, what can you do to help and how can you support? I mean, everything that Mike said is right on. We need all of, we need everything and we need all of it and we need more of all of it, um, whatever it is. Um, but we've also found that there's a lot of value in collectively advocating for things, whether it's at the state level, the federal level. Um, people listen when Los Angeles speaks, especially we can speak on, with the same voice, which we, if I've learned one thing since I've been in LA, it's that when LA comes together to do something, generally it's pretty effective. So advocacy, we have a, a place on our website where you can go and look at all the bills that we're sponsoring, look at everything that we're working on um, through the city and the federal government, um, and volunteer for our homeless count as well as a, in a, another piece that we can um, work with you on. So with that, um, I wanna answer questions and then we can come there. Well, okay. you. Awesome. First of all, thank you for your work. I know yes. I, I, I spent five years on the board of LA Family Housing. I know it's a, it's a great organization. Um, my question for you is how much of your outreach or energy are you spending? Uh, Councilman Bonin uh, eloquently talked about uh, kids who are coming out of foster, uh, people who are coming out of prison. These are predictably at risk people. Are you going to them? Or they hit the streets to, to tell them if you fall into X or don't fall into X, Y, and Z trap, um, uh, you know, come yeah. to us. Yeah. Uh, uh, the second question. So some of the ideas talked about by you and talked about by Council Councilman are, are good ideas. Um, and Councilman talked about, you know, misinformation on the neighbor or whatever, uh, those sites on my wife is like on all of them. Um, and um, are you, and also for, for councilman, but those, those um, avenues for communication are there. I consider myself fairly well informed, and a lot of this stuff I don't know. Why aren't there billboards around, or bus, and on the bus, homeless, don't get home, all this you need. Where is the... Um, forethought that the gentleman over there, and I don't know your name, sir, but he talked about Modesto, um, that um, Modesto had in seeing things coming down. So those yeah. are my Yeah, thank you, I appreciate that. Um, so there are a couple things. Um, so we are working to try to get the word out. Homelessness is complex, it's not linear, it looks different for everybody, and so 
trying to figure out what our messaging is and what folks can do and how to get the word out is always a challenge, but I think we need to do a better job of getting information out to people so you know um, what to access and where to access. So we have a, a new program, if you haven't used it, our LA Hop portal that we use. Um, so this is intended for the general public where if you see encampments and you see people experiencing homelessness, you can go to the LA Hop portal and report it and we will dispatch an outreach team to go talk to those individuals the next day. Um, that is one way that, yeah, the people who are already on the street, yeah. Yes, so the other piece, and I'm really glad that you asked this question, is about what about the other people who are coming out of the foster system, the criminal justice system. Um, what we're trying to help people see, and I know that you understand this, is that the homelessness system, LASA, what that LASA represents, is a safety net, but it should be the last safety net of all safety nets. In order to even get to homelessness, there are so many other systems that had to have failed for you to get there. So what can we do to push things upstream to work with the foster system, mental health, Department of Health Services, um, the criminal justice system? The systems we know tend to have a propensity for individuals that interact with those systems, end up homeless or experiencing some sort of homelessness. Um, and that type of engagement is happening um, both at the county level and at the city level and actually the council members of a huge advocate for this is figuring out how do we address this and stem it upstream so that they never have to fall into the homelessness system in the first place. It takes a lot of work, but I think we're actually starting to get engagement from some of those systems and they're starting to look differently, which includes taking some of our staff from LASA, our homeless outreach staff, and actually implanting them into those systems to teach those individuals how to do problem solving and prevention. You don't even have to be a service provider to do those things, but giving them those skills that they need um, to help people divert out of the homelessness system. 